Hey listeners, my name is Tori, and today we're going to be talking about the causes and impact of political assassinations by Ari Pelliger. Another interesting finding that the territorial fragmentation of a country is correlated with an increase in the number of assassinations. When a government loses control groups, both sides are more willing, willingly to use assassination to enhance their influence and to consolidate their status as the sole legitimate rulers of the polity. Overall, the study provides a multi-level understanding of the factors that contribute to the probability assassinations. It also further confirms that distant dynamics are in process in different types of assassinations. Now we'll talk about some impacts. For example, assassinations of heads of the state tend to generate a decline in the democracy, nature of the polity, and increase in domestic violence and its instability. They also increase economic property, which sounds counterintuitive, but may reflect the rise of a more open economic system after the elimination of the rulers. The findings in the study also indicate that more attention needs to be given to the safety of the political leaders during instances of violent domestic cases or transitions to democracy. <clears throat> Today I have a special guest with me. We'll be talking about some political leaders that have been assassinated just because they're a threat to society or just because their skin color. And let's move on. <clears throat> Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ariana. So Ariana, the first political leader that we will talk about is Medgar Evers. Medgar Wiley Evers born July 2nd, 1925 in Dead Curve, Mississippi. He works to overturn segregation at the University of Mississippi and end the segregation of public facilities and expand opportunities for African Americans which includes the enforcement of voting rights. So Ari, what are some, what are the impacts after Edvers' assassination have on society? Edvers became the first NAACP field secretary in Mississippi. He spearheaded demonstrations and boycotts of businesses that practice racial discrimination and organized voter registration for African Americans. The national outrage over Edvers' murder increased support for legislation that would become the Civil Rights Act assassinated June 12, 1963, Jackson, Mississippi. In the driveway outside of his home, Everett was shot to death by a white supremacist by the name of Brian De La Baker. The next political loser that was sadly assassinated right here in Dallas, Texas, you may know him as JFK, President John F. Kennedy. He served as the 35th President of the United States from January 20th, 1961 until his assassination on November 22nd, 1963 at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. Kennedy presided over the establishment of the Peace Corps, Alliance for Progress with Latin America, and the continuation of the Apollo Space Program with the goal of landing a man on the moon. He also supported the Civil Rights Movement, but was only somewhat successful in, pa in his passing frontier domestic policies. I ask you, what are some impacts that JFK left on today's society? Kennedy's assassination made a huge impact on the nation and the world. One, television surpassed news. Two, dawn of the conspiracies era. Three, a permanent distrust of federal government. Four, a full-on U.S. military engagement in Vietnam. One of the greatest political leaders, Malcolm X was an African-American leader in the civil rights movement, a minister, and a supporter of black nationalism. He urged his fellow black Americans to pro protect themselves against white aggression by any means necessary. A stance that often puts him at odds with the non-violent teaching of Martin Luther King Jr. <clears throat> Malcolm X was assassinated by rival black Muslims while addressing his Organization of Afro-American Unity in Washington, February 21st, 1960. What, what were some of the things that he left on us that really impacts us today, especially what's, what's going on right now? Some of the things that I think he imparted on us is that he argued for black power, black self-defense, and black economic autonomy. And encouraged racial pride. However, Malcolm 
Malcolm X's significance and influence remains after his death. His life and speeches helped build the foundations for black power movement and advancing black consciousness in the 1960s. Many of you know that he's the opposite of Malcolm X. He wanted peace. He wanted nonviolence. He wanted freedom for Give it up for Martin Luther King Jr. He had a strong belief in nonviolent protests that helped set the tone of the movement. Boycotts, protests, and marches were eventually effective, and much legislation was passed against racial discrimination. Dr. King, he had a dream that we were free and that we all live in peace and harmony and that we can come together as one instead of being separated. How did that impact on today's society with the younger generation and the upcoming generation? How did that impact you? Dr. King's leadership contributed to the overall success of the civil rights movement in the mid-1900s and continues to impact civil rights movements in the present. Dr. King's view on nonviolence and equality and his enormous effect on the citizens of America makes him the most influential person of the 20th century. Some people may know him as JFK's younger brother. Others know him as RFK. Robert Francis Kennedy. Robert fought organized crime and worked for civil rights for African Americans. Robert Kennedy was a committed advocate of the poor and racial minorities. We have, there are a lot of poor people, homeless people, you know, around everywhere, especially in Dallas. Robert, RFK, he influenced so many people after his, before and after his death. What like what led the people to continue his legacy today? After Dr. King's death, the nation had gone mad that the normal rules and constants of politics could no longer be counted on. Kennedy's death really did persuade many people to see private solutions to achieve to achieve and a, a kind of personal redemption. And that had a very, very long-lasting effect on American life. He was showing a willingness to identify America's faults and take action to correct them. At least one of the leaders of the Black Panther Party, you may know him as Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton was an American activist. He came to prominence in Chicago as chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party and deputy chairman of National Black Panther Party. So Ari, you know, the Black Panther Party, that's their very, very famous black activist group. Black rights, black power, black lives matter. I, w I want to know, like, what did he leave? What did he leave us after he was assassinated? He had a prominent multicultural political organization that included the Black Panthers, Young Patriots, and the Young Lords, and had an alliance among Chicago street gangs to help end fighting and work for change. Fred Hampton talked about serving the community justice programs, educating the people, and community control of police. Hampton was drugged, shot, and killed in his bed by Chicago police and FBI. Thank you, Ariana, for being my special guest today. And we'll see you next time on What's Your Take. Bye, everyone.